Hey guys, it's Michael from Devoted to Vinyl, and in this video, I'm wondering whether or not this Beatles record is worth thousands of dollars and your boy's about to cash in. Ching ching! So while we all love vinyl records because we love music and we love the warm sound that vinyl provides, it's only human nature to wonder whether or not the things that we collect have value. For a lot of collectors, it can be extremely exciting to know that the record that you bought for five bucks at the local thrift store or one that you inherited from a family member can be worth hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Everyone hopes that they could be sitting on a gold mine, but could that really be true? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you three easy ways you can go about finding out the value of your vinyl record collection. So without any further delay, let's jump right into it. Now, the first entry on this list is going to be the most obvious, but that doesn't mean it's not effective. And that's eBay. Now, before I sell any item on eBay, I always like to find out how much it's sold for previously. To do this, I would first go to the search bar. Then, I would type in the album I was interested in selling, or simply interested in knowing its approximate value. So in this case, I'm going to type in the words, Beatles Yesterday and Today Vinyl. To find out what this album sold for previously, I'll need to go over and hit the Advanced Search button. Then, you should see an option that says, Search Including, with a filter that says, Sold Listings. Make sure you click on that box, and then go up and click the search button. Now we're able to see all of the sold auctions for this album. I like to sort listings like these by highest price, which is easy to do via the sort listing drop down menu. From here, you can click on any listing you like and begin to get an idea of how much your record might be worth when compared to the same album having recently been sold by someone else. What I like about this method is that you get to see how the condition of the record sleeve and the record itself factors into the price. And in this example, there are copies of the album Yesterday and Today that, depending on the condition of the record, and specifically the version of the cover that's up for auction, can sell for hundreds of dollars. I'll dig more into why this is the case later in this video. Now, you might be wondering, if all I need to do is go on eBay and search for the previously sold listings, what more do I really need to do? Well, as great of a feature as this is on eBay, the truth is that it's severely limited, and that's because eBay only lets you view about three months worth of previously sold listings. So this brings me to number two on my list, which is actually a three-way tie between the websites PopPsych, Roots Vinyl Guide, and Gripsuite. Now, all three of these websites work in very similar fashion, as they're all aggregators of sold online auctions for vinyl records. This means that PopPsych, Roots Vinyl Guide, and Gripsuite keep an accessible database of all auctions related to vinyl records that have sold on eBay. Unlike using the search feature on eBay, which limits you to just three months worth of sold listings, I like that PopPsych, Roots Vinyl Guide, and Gripsuite all have databases that go back many, many years. And in some cases, results went back as far as 2003. In fact, I decided to test this out. On each website, I typed in Michael Jackson to simply see how many completed auction results of the past would come up in the search. On PopPsych, it resulted in 25,000 search results. Roots Vinyl Guide brought back 54,457 results, and Grip Suite returned 50,238 results. Typing in other artists, of course, provided varying results. For example, putting in R&B artist Stacey Ladisaw into Roots Vinyl Guide returned only 229 sold auctions while Gripsuite only provided 34 sold auctions. PopPsych, on the other hand, only provided 15 sold auctions. Now, while all three sites are technically free to use, you are encouraged to either sign up or become a paying member. The free version of PopPsych 
for example, allows you a daily limit of search queries on their website. Once you hit that limit though, you'll either have to come back another day to start anew or pay money for a full membership in order to have unlimited searches. And while Grip Suite is free, it does encourage you to pay a monthly membership in an effort to keep the website ad free. Doing so also gives you the benefit of listening to audio clips of records that were sold in auctions dating back 45 days or more. As far as what site is best to use, it really all comes down to personal preference. I tend to like all three for different reasons. Although one thing I do like about Root's Vinyl Guide, for example, is that along with all of the important eBay auction sales data you're looking for to gauge a record's worth, it also tends to feature supersized images of vinyl records or jackets that were sold in the auction. I really like this because the larger images give me a bigger window into the quality of the vinyl record or jacket. This provides me with a better idea of whether or not the record sold for higher than it's worth, less than it's worth, or about exactly what it's worth given its condition. All right, now that brings me to number three on my list, which is the website Discogs, which is one of, if not the very best music online database on the internet. Now, what's great about Discogs is that it provides you with so much helpful information about albums you're both looking to add to your collection, as well as ones you already own. So let's go to the search bar on Discogs and type in an artist or album title. And for the sake of continuity here, let's type in the album Yesterday and Today. From here, we arrive at the profile page for this album, which not only includes the track listing for this album, but information such as what year the album was released, what country it was released in, and the catalog number of the album as well. This page is particularly helpful in finding out what version of an album you have. And if you click into some of these listings, there is additional detail about the album to help you determine if the version that's in your collection matches this particular release. Now, before you sell any record, it's probably worth doing a little bit of research on its history before you jump onto eBay or Discogs and put the listing up for sale. Some records will lose their value over time, but every once in a while, you'll find a record that's in your collection that's worth a little bit of money. The album Yesterday and Today is a great example. In 1966, Capitol Records released this album with the infamous Butcher cover. The cover featured the band posed with raw meat and plastic dolls with severed heads. It wasn't long before the album cover ruffled a few feathers, and so Capitol Records decided to take action. What they did was replace the Butcher cover with an image of the Beatles posed beside an open trunk. These days, there are really four versions of this album you can buy or sell. The first version of this cover is the original Butcher cover art, which is called a First State Butcher cover. Basically, if you were fortunate enough to grab this album in stores in 1966, before it was yanked off shelves, you have a true First State cover. Now, the second version of this cover features the band pose next to the open trunk. But what makes this unique is that Capitol Records pasted this cover on top of the infamous Butcher cover. And so, if you have this cover, you might be able to see Ringo's black turtleneck bleeding through the pasted over trunk cover art. This version is often referred to as a second state Butcher cover. Now, the third version of this album is based on people that couldn't stop their curiosity from getting the best of them. That's because this album will actually feature the Butcher cover art. But that's only because the owner of the album peeled back the pasted over trunk cover art in an attempt to reveal the original Butcher cover. In this scenario, these covers are often referred to as third state butcher covers. And finally, the fourth version of this album will once again feature the trunk cover. There's no butcher cover art underneath this version, however, which is why it's referred to as a true trunk cover. 
So obviously this is a fairly unique circumstance, but it goes to show you that with a little bit of digging into the records you own, you can find some interesting history and maybe a valuable gem that's worth a little bit of money as well. So that's about it guys. If you enjoyed this video and you found it to be helpful, please hit that like button down below. I always love it when you guys take the time out of your day to do that. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel Devoted to Vinyl if you want to be alerted whenever a new video drops. And if you need any additional help when it comes to turntables or vinyl records, hop on over to my website devotedtovinyl.com. And before I get out of here, I want to leave you guys with this one question. Do you know if you already own any valuable records? And if so, which ones are they? If you do have any records that hold any value, do you still play them on your turntable or are they basically off limits? Let me know down in the comments section below. I can't wait to hear what you guys have to say, especially if some of you do have valuable records. And once again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.